Hey guys, today I'm going to do a follow-up to my duty belt video. I uh, mentioned my external carrier I use in conjunction with my duty belt, so I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit, how it works together, and give you a visualization of what I have and the gear I use while I'm on duty in uniform. Uh, I do wear this dress in my clothes occasionally. I'll throw it over what I have, but typically I wear it when I'm in uniform. Uh, the mic I mentioned they got loops on both sides so I go ahead and throw my mic up there run it down and then run it onto my duty belt and that's worked pretty nice holding my mic on there been able to manipulate it above I had this attachment added and it's just a, another loop I went to the tailor near my office and had that thrown on there, I hooked my badge into it, and then I, these are rifle plate slots up top, I don't know if you guys can see that, okay, so I hooked the bottom of my badge into that, and it pulls it secure, so if I'm, if I'm running or you know, wrestling with somebody, whatever's going on, bumping into stuff, it'll keep it, keep it secured on there. Uh, Safe Light Defense makes these. Uh, and they, it's high quality. I've had this vest a little over a year. I mean, you can see there's some, there's some honest wear on it. Get her into focus. There we go. Uh, my gun rubbing against the side straps. Uh, if you didn't have this reflective tape on there, which I'm not in a traffic unit. I do mostly investigations and regulatory enforcement. I wouldn't be doing this. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, my next vest, I plan on getting their tactical line. Molly, take the stuff off my belt, it'll help on my back. But I would not recommend this if you're not in a bigger department as a traffic unit and you only run traffic. You can see it's got a lot of it on there. So it will definitely be visible, and that's the idea behind it. So, uh, kind of show you the pockets. I got a pretty big pocket right up on the front here, and I typically drop my cell phone, my my pen and handcuff key, which I got in my chest pocket here today. But I drop them right in there, keeps them secure. You got the Velcro strap to hold it all down, so nothing's popping out. In this side pocket, I keep three items. It's a flashlight pocket. Uh, things I keep in there is this. The Streamlight Junior LED. It served me pretty well. I also mentioned the other day, and I plan on doing a review and showing of it, but it, it's my duty bag or patrol bag. Uh, I keep a bigger flashlight in there, but this is the one I typically keep on me if I'm in plain clothes. It sits in my pocket well. It's got a little bit of wear on it. It's held up pretty well. Uh, a little bit of a side note, I'm going to get to it quick for you guys that don't know. But when your flashlight goes bad, you can look down in there and you see those holes on the top and bottom. If your flashlight stops working, your button, go ahead and put something in there, a pen, a paper clip, and turn them and tighten it down. Uh, one time this flashlight went down on me after a drop, tightened it down, got it back on. So a uh, little, little pro tip about fixing, fixing these high quality flashlights like this. Uh, another thing I keep in there is a little stylus UV light. Uh, my boss got these for us. We deal with a lot of counterfeits, a lot of IDs, fraudulent ones in particular, but this light's been instrumental in helping me sort through the reels and the fakes, so I recommend carrying one of these, at least in your car. Uh, you know, with lots of IDs and counterfeit money out there, these kind of make it quick work for you. The other thing I keep in that same pocket is this big old border guard knife. It's a Smith & Wesson. I'm not big into spending a lot of money on flash, uh, flashlights or knives. I know a lot of guys are big into this stuff, but I mean, I'm hard on them. I use this for prying. I pick my teeth with it. I cut food with it. I'm just not going to spend a lot of money on a knife I'm probably going to tear up. And you can see this one's got some wear on it. Uh, it's got the nice Smith & Wesson grip textures on both sides nice sturdy clip. I've had this this knife for maybe five years or so and it's the most durable. It's the only knife I've kept this long uh, that survived my use. No clips breaking off, you know, the blade not busting off. But 
it's a good knife. Seatbelt cutter, glass breaker, important to me to have on there. Uh, I recommend the Smith Western Border Guard. It's kind of a big knife, but fits in my external carrier well. It's weighted. I put the Velcro strap down over it to keep it secured when I'm running. I've never had a fall out. Nowhere close, so I do recommend the knife. And then up front, I've got my badge number taped over there. You have this big, extremely large compartment here. You can see I put my whole hand in there, push it out. Uh, I typically keep my notebook in there, which I'll get to in a minute. But you could probably fit three or four of these in there. I typically run copies of everybody's IDs and statements and everything, and I load them in here when I'm on scene. And then it goes in conjunction with my notes. So when I'm writing my report, it makes quick work of that. Uh, I got this Boston Leather notebook. I keep my FOP cards in there, and then for the purposes of this, I threw a blank one in there, but these right in the rain logs, pretty much got everything on there. You could throw date, time, incident, circumstances, suspect, victim, witness, their information, uh, vehicle information, notes on the back, and behind that, I drop these blank notebooks in there. And I do that because I can write the date and the case corresponding to it and jot down some more notes or information. Uh, helps me get my report out pretty fast. I like to pump them out. And a good quality report. Uh, you need a lot of information to be thorough, so that notebook helps me keep all my thoughts together with all the information we have to have for our you know, reports. So that's kind of the carrier itself on the external. I'm going to talk about the quality. I've had this for a little over a year, year and a half or so. Uh, it's got some wear on it. It's held up well. It's comfortable. It's got a nice mesh liner. I'm pretty fortunate investigator type job. Uh, I can pop it off when I get to my office at my desk, dry it out. Everybody knows who's wore body armor. It gets hot and they're sweaty. This vest comes on and off easy. No problem. Dries quickly. I don't sweat too bad in it. I mean, body armor, it is what it is, but uh, I went with the, they're actually level 3 plus armor panels, and I don't have them with me, but level 4 in conjunction with rifle plates that drop in the front. I typically only wear the level 3 plus soft armor. Uh, I'm going into something more high risk, I might throw the plates in. Pretty rare that I do that or I have time to do it. So, Free field training, and some other people have done reviews on this company and their body armor. It's very high quality. Uh, the tests are impeccable. This will do uh, nine, it's level three, so NIJ standards. I think it's 44 Magnum, and it'll do all the way up to that. But this is plus, level three plus. So it'll also do nine millimeter armor penetrators. When you go ahead and throw the rifle plates in here, you're talking four, uh, 30 out six armor penetrators with the in conjunction with rifle plates. So they're not standalone plates, but with the body armor, you got some serious protection with the soft body armor and the plates. These are also stab, taze, and slash proof, okay? Uh, Free Field Training has an excellent video testing these panels, so I highly recommend you check it out if you're thinking about them. With the plates, we're talking, I spent 730 something dollars on it. Um, I know that's out of some people's price range. Drop the plates off. I think those were like 360. So now you've, you've got the price down quite a bit. I mean, 300, 400 bucks in, in that range. Um, it's more manageable. Safe Line Defense also offers a payment plan set up. So you can get on there and break it up into monthly payments. It makes it affordable for guys that you know, aren't fortunate enough to have the extra cash to supply themselves with some top quality gear but I do highly recommend them. Your safety can't be bought, guys. Uh, you owe it to your family, your friends, and your partners at your department to come home safe and be alive. And if you can split it up into payment plans and afford it, I highly recommend you do so. Uh, it'll keep you alive, keep your partners alive, and it'll keep your friends and family happy and healthy too, not worrying about you as much. Uh, that's what I got for my external carrier that I run with my uniform and sometimes plain clothes kind of works in conjunction with my duty belt if you have any comments or questions on 
my setup or why I have it set up this way, go ahead and drop them in the comments section. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I kind of want to create like a form here for people in security, law enforcement, corrections to communicate, help each other get to the next level. Uh, I'm always trying to improve and I'm interested to learn from you guys and hopefully somebody will learn something from me that'll get them where they want to be in this field and get them more efficient and safer. Uh, like I said, please, please comment with endorsements or experiences on why you like my setup or experiences on why you think this is the wrong setup and what I can improve on mine. Thanks, stay safe.